Here's today's reminder. If your church is going to grow, you have to equip your leaders. But how do you do this? How do you empower the leaders at your church to lead well? Join us at equiplab.com backslash church leaders. We're here to equip your ministry team to thrive. Just go to equiplab.com backslash church leaders and join us today. Hello and welcome to the Church Leaders Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Day. Today we are talking about the subject of Christian nationalism, a term that has been in the news and on the minds of many after the January 6th Capitol riot. So what is Christian nationalism and how do we address it in our churches? We're going to look at the topic from a sociological, theological, and pastoral perspective. You'll likely hear information and insights you haven't heard before. You might not agree with all of it, but after listening to all four episodes of this series, you'll definitely be more informed and better equipped to help your congregation Approach Christian Nationalism from a Christ-Centered Perspective. For those of you new to the Church Leaders Podcast, our goal is to help those working in churches lead better every day. Each season of our podcast explores a topic the church is grappling with. Listen as thought leaders, theologians, and pastors offer their insights on the most pertinent discussions happening in churches today. If you enjoy the Church Leaders Podcast, please leave us a review. Your reviews and ratings help other ministry leaders find us and benefit from our content as well. And now... Allow me to introduce our guest. Welcome to the Church Leaders Podcast, conversations with today's top ministry leaders to help you lead better every day. And now podcasting from scenic Colorado Springs, Colorado, here's your host, Jason Day. Franklin Graham is the elder son of Billy and Ruth Bell Graham. He has served as president and CEO of Samaritan's Purse since 1979 and as president and CEO of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association since 2001. Under his leadership, Samaritan's Purse has met the needs of poor, sick, and suffering people in more than 100 countries. As an evangelist for the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, Franklin has also led crusades around the world. Now in this episode, Franklin and I discuss the current state of the American church in relationship to politics. Franklin shares his thoughts on those who participated in the Capitol riot of January 6th. He also speaks about whether a Christ follower can hold beliefs that many have labeled as liberal, and how pastors can encourage their people to embrace biblical principles. So let's dive into my conversation with Franklin Graham. Welcome to the Church Leaders Podcast, Franklin. Thank you. It's good to be with you. Yes, brother. Now, Christian leaders such as Tim Keller and Russell Moore have felt the need to warn the evangelical church about falling into nationalism. Franklin, do you feel there's a need to be concerned? Well, I think there's always a, a need to be concerned whether it's a bigger problem as, as maybe some think it is. I don't know. But um, I think there's always a problem if uh, people lose sight, especially if Christians lose sight of what our purpose in life is. And our purpose in life is to is make disciples of all nations mm-hmm. and to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is the orders that the King of Kings and the Lord is Lord have given to the church. That's what we're to do. Right. So um, a lot of Christ followers in America have kind of wrestled a little bit with the tension between um, patriotism and and possibly moving into um, idolatry when it comes to nationalism. What do you think is the line between being patriotic and then kind of overstepping that to idolatry? Well, first of all, um, I I hope all of us that live in this country have patriotism. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, but I do not worship my government. I worship God and his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm a citizen of the United States. I want to be a, a good citizen. I want to make a contribution to, to our society that we live in. Uh, but, um, I don't worship the United States of America. Uh, our country is not a Christian country, never has been. Hmm. And uh, we have some Christian principles, right, right. But, we're not a, but we're not a Christian country. And, um, and we've got a lot of evil and a lot of wickedness in this country. Uh, but yet uh, we want to be, uh, as Christians, we want to be salt and light. Uh, salt is, a, uh, of course, is a preserving influence, light. We want to take the light of the gospel and just share it uh, with as many people as we can share it with. Yeah, that, that's excellent. Now, as you um, look around the world, not just in, in America, but around the world, 
Um, do you think it's it's necessary, regardless of what country a Christian might live in, for a, a Christ follower to be patriotic to that particular country? Well, of course. I mean, if, if you are a, a Russian, right, uh, the churches are going to be uh, supportive of, of, of their country. Uh, and, you know, governments come and go. Right. Uh, just like we have presidents in this country that come and go. But I'm still going to support our Constitution. I'm still going to support our government. Uh, and, and, and churches in Russia are going to support their government. Uh, churches in France are going to support their government. Churches in Germany are going to support their government. I mean, of course, uh, but at the same time, um, we want to be good citizens in this world, regardless of what nation we belong to. Right. We want to be good citizens, and as followers of Christ, we want to present the gospel of Jesus Christ to the country where we live. And that's how we, as Christ followers, we present the gospel uh, to everyone. And I thank God for my Russian brothers and sisters, my Chinese brothers and sisters in the faith uh, that are sharing the gospel in their country, and thank God for them. And so every country, uh, it's it, it, Christ followers need to be good citizens. Yeah, no, that, that, that's excellent, Franklin. Now, our, our country faced um, a really challenging day back on January 6th um, when protesters stormed the Capitol building. And, and you spoke out, you said that there are thugs, that, that you think they should be prosecuted for their actions. Do you think that those people who participated, um, those who are you know professing Christians, do you believe that through their participation in that riot, they crossed the line into idolatry? No, not, not for, I think the, the, the million plus people mm -hmm. that showed up in Washington uh, were concerned citizens and was concerned that the election uh, was fraudulent. Whether it was or not, uh, uh, history will tell us, okay? Right. But uh, they certainly had concerns about it. And, uh, and the people that marched down and, and uh, broke down the, the doors at the Capitol, those weren't Christians. Uh, if you listen to the audio tapes, hmm. uh, it was F you this and F you that all the way th through the halls of, of the Capitol. And that's not, that's not what uh, that's not the language uh, followers of Jesus Christ use. And so, were, were there Christians down at the White House listening to Trump's speech? Yes, but uh, those that that went into the the Capitol, uh, I, I just I think that was a different group of people. Hmm. What would you say to someone who did participate in actually breaking into the Capitol, who was claiming to uh, profess belief in Christ? Um, you know, kind of as, as a pastor, as a friend, what, what would you speak into their life? I, I, I would just say you, you, you made a great mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that capital belongs to all Americans. And uh, you have no right uh, to bust out those windows and to, and, to, and to endanger the lives of those police and uh, th that you were wrong. And uh, I, I, I do not support that one bit. Right, right. No, I, I appreciate that, Franklin. Um, do you think that someone can be a Christ follower and also hold what what many would consider quote unquote liberal views towards things like immigration or LGBTQ inclusion or abortion? Well, first of all, remember a Christ follower, you have to be a Bible believer, okay? Right. And the Bible is very clear on on things like uh, abortion, life is sacred. Right. Uh, and uh, if you take uh, God made us male and female, uh, he didn't make some other gender. Um, and marriage is between a man and a woman. And any type of sexual relationship outside of a marriage relationship between a man and a woman is sin. And, and God is going to judge sin. But that's why he sent Jesus Christ was to die for sin. But we don't continue to live in our sins and say, I, I, I follow Christ, so therefore I'm going to be gay and I follow Christ, or I follow Christ and I'm going to be an alcoholic and drunk. And, and uh, no, we are to repent and turn from our sins. And uh, we are to uh, follow uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but we just don't continue to live in our sins. So if a person is a Christ follower, they have to be a Bible believer. 
and follow the Word of God. Yeah, in, in our country, it's interesting, Franklin, you know, you know this, it's, you know, we're, we're basically a two-party system. You know, for the most part, we have um, Republicans and Democrats, conservatives and, and liberals, right? So, um, so sometimes that can be a challenge as someone who is um, sincerely trying to follow Jesus, because they may not agree with everything completely on either side. Um, so, so how do you kind of reconcile that? Uh, you know, how, how do people kind of process through that? What would you encourage them to think through as they're praying about um, some of these kind of political agendas? Well, first of all, where do the political agendas uh, line up uh, as far as the teaching of God? Uh, I've, I've, uh, I'm an independent. I'm not a Democrat and I'm not a Republican. Mm-hmm. And uh, I split my vote. There's, there's some Democrats I think are, are worth uh, voting for. Uh, there's some that uh, I wouldn't. <laughs> And same thing, the Republican Party. There's not mm-hmm. everybody in the Republican Party is wonderful. Uh, they've got some problems, too. And when uh, President Trump talked about the swamp uh, in Washington, that, that swamp is a Republican swamp as well as a Democratic swamp. And um, uh, there's a lot of evil in, in our country today. And that's why it's so important for us as Christians uh, to stand for the Word of God and not compromise on God's Word. Yeah, some, some Christians um, have an issue, um, you know, discomfort, you might say, with a lot of support for President Trump um, that has has been seen by evangelical leaders because they're concerned about does President Trump or has President Trump really upheld Christian values? What would you say to those people who have those concerns? Well, first of all, the president, uh, you have to look at his policies. You can't look at um, his personality. Uh, just look at his policy. Uh, and over the last four years, he, he did what he said he was going to do. Uh, he, he said he was going to build a wall. He did that. He said he was going to lower taxes. He did that. Uh, he said that he was going to appoint conservative judges. He did that. And so it's kind of refreshing to have a politician who follows through with what he said he's going to do. Um, not everything that the president did was right. Uh, he, he certainly made some mistakes. But you have to look at his policy on moral issues uh, as it relates to life. And that is so important. He was the the most pro-life president we've ever had. And um, you have to look at the policies of the Biden administration, what they want to do. And they want to pass the Equality Act, which is extremely dangerous. And it's frightening when you read what's inside the Equality Act. But that's their policy. That's what they stand on. And... um, and I just think for us as Christians, uh, we're going to have a very difficult uh, few years in front of us. We'll lose a lot of our freedoms, and uh, I'm not sure we'll get it back in our lifetime. Mm. In terms of Christian nationalism, do you feel that um, evangelical Christian leaders and church leaders who were very supportive of President Trump, do you think they kind of fed into the idea of Christian nationalism? No. I think they looked at policy. They weren't looking at uh, his personality. They were looking at policy. And uh, they aligned themselves uh, more with his policy than what the Democrats were, were uh, proposing. And so, again, the president is just one person within the party. And there's a lot of people who are making policies. Mm-hmm. But I just have to look at what uh, the president stood for and what he did. And... Uh, so I don't think it has anything to do with Christian nationalism. It's about just uh, voting for the person and the policies of that person. Yeah, Franklin, you, you've made it clear over the years that you believe America is in moral decline, and, and many of us uh, see that in front of us. You say one of the things we need to do is reestablish Christian principles in our society. And there's much debate among Christian leaders about what really reestablishing those Christian principles should should actually look like. You know, how should that come to fruition? In your view, what are those principles and what political agendas do you feel are behind supporting these principles best? Well, first of all, um, I think uh, there are a number of churches that have caved in uh, on some moral issues. Uh, homosexuality is not a political issue. It's a moral issue. Uh, abortion is not a uh, political issue. Uh, it's a moral issue. And I think for us as Christians, we need to stand on moral issues. 
And uh, we need to back those moral issues, not cave in because it's not politically correct. And there are a lot of people, a lot of Christians have just decided not to speak out because they don't want to ruffle feathers. They don't want to make someone upset, so they don't speak out on abortion or same-sex marriage. And these are moral issues, and I think this is uh, a great mistake for us to be quiet on it. I think we need to speak out on it and warn young people of the dangers of sin, because God is going to judge sin. And, uh, you know, said, you know, people say, well, God is love, and Jesus loves us, and Jesus understands, and he wants us to be happy. So it's okay to uh, uh, marry whoever we want to marry or have sexual relations with whoever we want to have those relations with, because God wants us to be happy. Well, they're, what they're doing is they're swallowing a lie. It's just an absolute lie. Uh, when we see Jesus in Revelations, uh, it's a scary picture. Uh, this isn't some loving person coming out of heaven. That He's coming uh, to conquer, and he's got eyes. He's got eyes, eyes like coals of fire. He's got a tongue, a sword that's coming out of his mouth uh, to devour the nations. And uh, he's coming back to to clean this earth, subdue this earth, and he's going to come to reign. And this is this is the Jesus that's coming. And for every one that's living in sin. He's going to judge them, and it's not going to be pretty. Yeah, and at the same time, you did say that, you know, Jesus does represent love. I mean, Jesus on uh, Sermon on the Mount talks about blessed being the peacekeepers and those types of things. So the, the idea of, of love is very inherent in, in who Jesus is. So how can um, Christ followers, how can pastors, churches, how can they minister to people who have differing views uh, out of a sense of love as well? Well, first of all, it's not about uh, trying to minister to people with different views. Preach the Word of God, okay? And uh, let the Word of God shape people's views. You don't let uh, people's views uh, shape God's Word. God's Word shapes their your view. Mm -hmm. And But if we're not preaching the Word of God, you're not shaping anybody's view. If people are going to church just to be entertained and, right. uh, and go to a rock concert on Sunday morning, what are you doing? Uh, you know, you're, you're just... Uh, feeding this fire. But we need to be preaching the gospel, and we need to be sharing and teaching the Word of God and not let culture change the church, but the church needs to be changing and influence culture. Very well, Franklin. Yeah, I appreciate those insights. And as we're kind of wrapping up our conversation here, there are pastors and ministry leaders listening in right now. Franklin, what words of encouragement would you like to share with the pastors and ministry leaders who are listening? Well, I remember years ago, um, uh, Chuck Smith of Calvary Chapel in Costa Mesa, and uh, he was known for teaching through the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. And he would start with Genesis, and he'd go all the way to Revolution, or Revelations, and then he'd start over again. And so I asked him, I said, uh, why did you do that? He said, well, to be honest with you, Franklin, after about a couple of months out of this new church, I ran out of messages. <laughs> <laughs> so I just started in Genesis. And he said, it took me about uh, a year and a half to go all the way through the Bible. He said, the next time I went through, it took me about five years to go all the way through. The third time I went through, it took about 10 years because <laughs> wow. he himself was learning as right. he preached it. And, but he just preached the word of God and he influenced a whole generation of young pastors uh, that went out. Uh, I mean, have, and today they have mega churches. Mm -hmm. But based on the same model, you take Greg Laurie, you take Skip Heitzig, and, and these guys have mega churches that um, uh, they're built on just the, the fundamentals of teaching the Word of God cover to cover. Excellent, brother. Thank you so much for making time to be with us on the Church Leaders Podcast. We certainly appreciate you and your ministry. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, Franklin. Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Church Leaders Podcast. Be sure to check out the other episodes in this series. You don't want to miss out on the full discussion. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss any of our interviews. We'd appreciate it if you could take just a few moments to let us know your thoughts by leaving us a review on your preferred podcast platform or sending an email to podcast at churchleaders.com. Your positive reviews and ratings help other ministry leaders find us and benefit from our content. So until next time, this is Jason Day encouraging you to love well and lead well. You've been listening to the Church Leaders Podcast. For articles, videos, and free resources that will help you lead better every day, visit our website at churchleaders.com. 
Thanks for listening. 